What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to tell you what I consider are the best and only eight emulators to have on your Android device. The phone I will be using in this video is a Samsung Galaxy S22 paired with the GameSir G8 Galileo controller. If you like this controller, a link to buy one will be in the description below. I'm going to kick things off with this app called Lemuroid. Now, this is not an actual emulator itself, but instead a front end that has a bunch of emulators built in that don't require individual setup. You just load in your ROMs and the front end will launch whatever emulator inside it that's necessary to play that game. It also has a nice looking interface that separates your ROMs by systems and adds box art. I recommend using this for any system that was released before the N64. Although it does play N64, PS1, and PSP games as well, but it's great for systems such as Super Nintendo, Genesis, NES, and Game Boy Advance, just to name a few. And yes, I recommend this over RetroArch because it's just way easier to set up and use for anyone new to emulation. You can download Lemuroid from the Google Play Store. The next emulator I recommend is the Nintendo 64 emulator M64 Plus FZ. Now there are two options on the Play Store, one's a paid version for $4 that does not have ads and the other is a free version that does. I recommend just using the free version since you only see a small ad right before you start up a game that you can easily exit out of. But this is a very good emulator with mostly every game working on it. Now Lemuroid runs N64 games great as well using Moopin64 as its core, which is basically the same thing as this app. But if you want more customizable options, then you want to use the M64 Plus standalone app. But if you want to just drop and play, then you will be more than happy just using Lemuroid for N64. M64 Plus FZ is available on the Google Play Store. Now we have the PlayStation emulator, DuckStation. This emulator offers high compatibility, good speed, accurate sound, HD enhanced graphics, and save states. And this emulator has a very nice and easy to navigate interface while still offering a lot of features. It also plays almost all PS1 games with no issues. The only downside about this emulator is that it requires a BIOS, but finding one is not that hard. Google is always your friend when it comes to searching for this type of stuff. But other than that, I would say I love DuckStation and I prefer using this standalone app over using Lemuroid which runs PS1 games using PCSX. And once again, Lemuroid will do just fine for PS1 emulation, but if you want a better experience with more features, I recommend DuckStation. You can download DuckStation from the Play Store or from the DuckStation website. Keeping it moving, next is a Nintendo DS emulator called Melon DS. Another emulator that runs within Lemuroid as well, but again, I prefer the standalone. Let's just be honest here, the real reason we use Game Boy and DS emulators are to play Pokemon games. And DS has the best ones, Pokemon Black and Soul Silver are the best. And you get quite a few setting options with Melon DS, with a big one being the ability to customize screen placement and the size of both screens. Also, something that's helpful for speeding up those Pokemon games, you have fast forward to speed up the game. The only bad thing here is that there is no Wi-Fi or online multiplayer, so you won't be able to trade Pokemon. But other than that, Melon DS runs DS games perfect, and you will have a great experience. You can download Melon DS from the Play Store. Now we have the Sega Dreamcast emulator, ReDream. You get a great experience here to relive Sega's last console. The emulator is super easy to set up with no BIOS files needed. And if you have a decent powered phone, you will be able to run your Dreamcast games in HD without any slowdown. And just like the PC version of ReDream, the Android interface is exactly the same. Clean, simple to use, and just looks really great, even adding box art to all of your Dreamcast ROMs. It's the best looking emulator on Android, to be honest. And you can download ReDream from the Play Store. Next is the GameCube and Wii emulator Dolphin. 
and with a powerful phone this emulator will give you a really good experience even with the resolution turned up and changing the aspect ratio to 16 to 9. That's the way I prefer to play. The interface looks clean and the emulation of the GameCube and the Wii are near perfect. As for playing Wii games, you will be limited to games that were not built around the motion controls, but there are still a lot of games that can be played just fine with touchscreen or a controller. Now for GameCube, you will have the best experience with or without a controller. You can download the Dolphin emulator from the Play Store or the official site. Moving on, and this is the PSP emulator PPSSPP. Another emulator that can be ran on Lemuroid as a core, but you get the better performance and options when you use the standalone app. PPSSPP has near perfect compatibility and with a decent powered phone, you will experience a good performance. You can upscale your graphics and run your games at 60 FPS. Now you will notice two different apps, the gold version that will cost you $5 and the free version that will be colored blue. There is no difference between the two apps. If you pay the $5, it's basically just a donation to the creators. So if you wanna do that, that's up to you. PPSSPP is available on the Play Store as well as the official site. Now this is the last emulator I recommend for Android and that is Nether SX2, the PlayStation 2 mobile emulator. This spot would have went to Aether SX2 but it was removed from the Play Store. Now there are still ways to get it but we are sticking with Nether SX2 because it still receives updates and will only get better. This app can be kind of complicated to get set up on your phone and if you need help with it, I have my setup guide in the description below that will help you get Nether SX2 up and running on your device. As for the app, well, it doesn't run every game perfect and there are flaws, but it's the best choice we have when it comes to PS2 emulation on Android. And there's nothing better than playing the greatest console of all time on your phone. If you disagree with me on that, then we can argue about it in the comments. Nether SX2 can be downloaded from this site, but make sure to check out my setup guide. If you guys would like to consolidate all of the emulators I have showed you in this video, then watch this video next where I show you how to set up this Android emulator front end called LaunchBox. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I will catch you in the next one. Peace.